Good evening, everybody. Well, it is, in fact, evening for me. Um, I wanted to take a second to talk about something I just heard about. Um, I am a little late to this, if I'm being perfectly honest, 10 days uh, late to it at the time of recording, but I wanted to talk about something really cool within my field of expertise, which for those who don't know, I am a software developer. I know how to code. That's my trade, as it were. And um, I want to talk about Voyager 1. Some backstory for those unaware. Voyager 1 was a space probe launched by NASA in September on, in 1977. Um, and as part, it was basically its goal was to um, study the outer solar system and go into interstellar space beyond the sun's heliosphere. Um, it has uh, provided tons of data, including above flybots of Jupiter, Saturn, Titan, and others. Um, it hit Voyager two, uh, and it's which is its sister has done you know similar work. Voyager one um, has at this point flown outside of uh, our solar system. Um, and it is now in interstellar space and it's sending us data back uh, for that. Um, what I want to talk about is back in December of this last year, uh, the v Voyager 1's flight data system was unable to use um, a something called a telemetry modulation unit, preventing it from transmitting scientific data. It would still send data back, it would just be garbled. Um, here's what's interesting. And this is why it's important to my profession. Um, the folks behind it uh, did. There's a couple points of why I think this is really, really cool. Um, for one thing, uh, they coded, pushed a patch, coded and put up and pushed up a patch to Voyager that took two whole days to reach Voyager. So the first thing is, is it's out of our solar system and the patch was able to reach it within two days, which is already crazy. Second, um, you had folks coding and pushing a, uh, a, a a patch to the software of Voyager 1 with technology that both the probe itself and the computers they coded the, this, this patch on are weaker than this cell phone. And the third thing is they were able to take a language it was from the 70s, which with all of the debilitating issues that come with playing like, with, you know, without the trappings of, you know, modern advancements in, in, in software development. And put out a patch. On a 50 year old code base using a 50 year old language. That's really freaking unheard of with legacy code in, in, in professional environments like that's not an easy thing to do the longer a code base is out of sync with modern standards the harder it is to get it up to up to snuff so that's incredible um the thing that was really 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 interesting on how they did this was is, is that data was still being sent back it was just garbled it wasn't it wasn't coming back in a in the format that they needed it to be in um but it gave Voyager 1, as a safeguard, sent back everything, all of the analytical data about um, the uh, probe itself. And they realized that that's how they realized that the chip that was broken was not, you know, was corrupted. It wasn't, it was malfunctioning. And so what they did was, is that they took, uh, they, they refactored everything. says, okay, you're going to use this chip and this chip and this chip, and you're going to partition out the data on these three chips and in, 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 for storage reasons and you're just going to ignore this malfunctioning chip in its entirety and they patched that in and they did it 
in one patch that they sent once that took two days to get to the edge of our to, to get to the edge of our solar system. That's so fucking cool. It's so cool. Because not only does do these amazing programmers do something that most pr programmers probably wouldn't have been able to do in the first place, they did it with machinery that not only did they not have like have access to, but was also further away than anything on record that's originated from our planet has ever been. Um. I recognize that there's a lot of awful things going on in the world right now and a lot of reasons to be generally hopeless, but this is a, a beautifully amazing example of human ability and ingenuity and, you know, it's good to have some hope. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for indulging me with this uh, brief little romp through, uh, you know, just talking about something really cool that happened in my in my in, in my field. Um, if you want to support me, um, you can do so by donating a dollar to my Ko-Fi link at hmedia.gg slash tip. Is a boon for my mental health, and I would genuinely appreciate it. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you, your time, and your listenership. As you can see by this eye mask. getting to be EB hours, so I'm ahead to bed. Have a lovely rest of your night.